Welcome to Only Connect and what I can honestly describe as a semi-final. Tonight I can promise you fireworks and drama, though perhaps with less honesty than when I describe this as the semi-final. It's harder than ever at this stage. The answers are as elusive as the contents of a Findus lasagna. And like those contents, our teams are keen to gallop to victory. So let's meet tonight's runners and riders. On my right, Ian Clark, a Cambridge Law graduate and practising solicitor, who was once locked in a cell with a man who claimed to be married to the Queen Mother. Sam Goodyear, a Cambridge history graduate who appeared in a credit card advert with Jennifer Saunders. And their captain, Mark Walton, a sports fanatic and craft ale connoisseur who enjoys volcano trekking and urban walking. United by their love of mool and wine, they are the Francophiles. Mark, you beat the festival fans and the fell walkers to come straight to the semi-final with no losses. So do you have any new tactics or you don't need them? Well, my team have been kind enough to remind me that I buzzed in a little early on a couple of answers in the previous games. And we know the questions are going to be a little bit trickier uh, for the semi-final. So it might be um, taking a little bit more time to, um, before I start pressing away. But don't be so down on yourself. What things do you think you've done right? We've been really good on the wall and the missing vowels. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're hoping that we go into those with a bit of a lead and then pull away. Tonight, you will be facing, on my left, Colin Kidd, a chartered accountant and Watford supporter who once took four and a half years to play a game of chess. Mark Cooper, a crime novel enthusiast and international relations graduate who enjoys taking friends on walking tours of foreign embassies in London. And their captain, Josh Mandel, an Oxford English graduate who has cycled the length of Britain without getting lost and will soon be walking the breadth of Britain without getting lost. United by their love of maps, they are the Carterfiles. Josh, you've had a more meandering route to the semi-final. You lost to the Celts, then beat the Corpuscles and the Fellwalkers. What do you think of tonight's opposition? Well, there are clearly uh, a couple of talented quizzes uh, among the Francophiles, but I think we've worked out where their weak spots are. And what tactics will you be employing that you haven't previously? Well, I don't really want to show our hands, Victoria, but I think we'll be mostly aiming to uh, get the questions right. Well, let's ask those questions and see if you manage to. We'll be starting with round one. What's the connection between four apparently random clues? That's what happens in round one. Francophiles, you won the toss. You'll be going first. Please choose a hieroglyph. Uh, Horned Viper. The Horned Viper, immediately the music question. Ask and you shall receive. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Pistol shots ring out in a barroom night. Into Betty Valentine from the Ember Hall. She sees a box that was planted. No matching bullets. Prince on the handle, no proof to show. I don't know how it is. Next. There are six women in the prime. I'm going to kill for this part. It's Mm -hmm. Gowan, Next. Three seconds. The band's names are all derived from slang terms. I'm just looking at the band's names. No, they are not all derived from slang terms, so there's a bonus chance for the Carter Files. They're all songs about people who have been wrongly imprisoned. They are protest songs about imprisonments. What did you hear? What imprisonments are we talking about? We had uh, The Hurricane uh, first by Bob Dylan about Reuben Carter, the boxer. Mm -hmm. The last one was uh, Free Nelson Mandela. Yeah, that's it, we Mm -hmm. The third one was The Pogues, and I recognise the song, but I can't think what it is. Streets of Sorrow, Birmingham 6. That's what that was. And the second one, Tyler, by UB40. That's about the Louisiana teenager, Gary Tyler. He's not a teenager now, still in prison. He was imprisoned in 1975 for a shooting, and there's been various appeals and people saying that the rulings were unfair, but he's still in prison. Protest songs about imprisonments was the answer, so you get a bonus point, Carter Files, and it's your turn to choose a question. Twisted flax, please, Victoria. OK, what is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Mm -hmm. 
So what do we need? Three okay. weeks. Next. That was the car, the yellow car. Was the Cadillac yellow? No, I can't remember. White and red. But it's going to be good. Was, the, was well, Bessie well, an well. ambulance? No, I haven't seen Bessie. Was the yeah, I know. Should we go next? Yeah. Next, please. Next. Three seconds. Special number plates. They all had um, sort of personalised number plates or, or special number plates that m sort of reflected what they were. With a one in it, I think. Fab. With a one. What? With a one. Fab one. Fab. With a one in it. Yes, that's right. They had personalised number plates with a one in it. Okay. You seem uncertain, but quite right. Ghostbusters. Do you know what the number plate was? I know it had a one in it. Ecto one. Ecto one. Doctor Who's Bessie. I think it was John Pertwee that drove that car mostly, a sort of Edwardian roadster. That was who won. And uh, that's a question that people will be asking after tonight. Who won? Postman Pat's vehicle, Pat won, of course, and Lady Penelope's Rolls Royce, Fab one. So that's right, personalised with a one. Over to you, Francophiles, to pick a question. Uh, lion. Lion. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next. Ego-kinetic, so it's eye and energy, like movement, yeah. eye, eye and movement. Yeah. It's a rapid eye movement. Next. Six a D cost, so that's six uh, addic or do anyone? Is Greek any good? Some of them are real words, so they're, 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 they're not some string for round. Next. Uniglossal, so that's one tongue, and then so. Is it words that have been... Oh, are they... No, are they half Latin and half Greek rooted words? Oh, I like it, yeah. Words that are half Latin and half Greek rooted? Keep talking. So, like, the ego is I, kinetic bit is from the Greek and they've been um, artificially made to describe a, a modern term. That's exactly what it is. They are artificially constructed words exactly by taking a word that we know that's Greek and then Latin, and swapping them round. I mean, this is a question so horrible. If it appeared at your window in the night, you'd be in therapy for years. <laughs> Remote optic. Brilliant. You see, it's Latin and then Greek. If you retranslated it to Greek-Latin, you'd get television. Oh, yeah. Ego-kinetic, oh. if you swap the Latin part for the Greek part, you'd get automobile, or automobile. Sexadecal would become hexadecimal. Yeah. Can you do it with uniglossal? Monolingual. Monolingual, mm -hmm. exactly. Very well done. Hold on, Sam. Good You're a linguist, Sam. No. <laughs> Do you speak any Latin or Greek? A bit of Latin and no Greek at all, basically. Well, you did extremely well with that question. Thanks. Well done. I didn't think anyone would get that. Your turn, Carter Files, to pick a hieroglyph. Two reeds, please. Two reeds. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Oh, well, they could all be Eric's. I think we'll have to go next. Yeah. Yeah. Next. Chris Christopherson. It's something. Like oh, this. yes, yes. yes. Some of it is the same. It's the first. Bit. Yes. Should we go for it? It's people whose first name is part of their surname. That's what it is. The first name starts off the surname. You didn't need to see the original host of Mastermind, the man we all revere, Magnus Magnuson. Who did you see? We saw Chris, Chris Christopherson. That's male lead born. of A Star Is Born, yes. And we think the King of Iceland was Eric Eric's, uh, Eric Eriksson? Actually, it was Jürgen Jürgensen. Oh, but well. good guess. And the Welsh hymn writer. Come um, on, he's Welsh, have a guess. David... De uh, David Davidson. David Davidson. <laughs> William. No, it's William Williams, William, so. of course. Yeah. William Williams is the hymn writer. Well done, Carterphiles. Back to you then, Francophiles, for the last choice. Eye of Horus. OK, what is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. You need to pull the chest. chest, chest, chest. OK, next. Patrick. Oh, she's a female. She's a female um, ED500 or something driver. Oh. I'm the first, the first female to two. play against men. Should we get another one? Get another one. Next. Uh, yeah, she's the first. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah.
So they're women who've been the first to compete at their specific disciplines. Charlotte Boo's the first jockey in the Grand National. Judith Polgar, first ch female chess grandmaster. And Danica Patrick's first woman to compete in the Indy 500 or the yeah. daytime? Yeah, I'll take it. I mean, the, the last one which you didn't see, Michelle Wee. They're not always the oh, first the to compete. They're the first to compete on equal terms. I think that's what I'm saying. Okay. First women to compete on equal terms. You're quite right. Charlotte Brew was the first woman to ride in a Grand National. Danica Patrick was the first to win an IndyCar Championship event. To win, I think, possibly okay, not to yeah. race. Judith Polgar played chess and Michelle Wee plays in what they call men's events on the PGA on, Tour. Well, they are all heroic people. You are right that they are the first women to compete <coughs> equally in traditionally male competitions. Carter Files, the water question remains. You can probably guess they're going to be picture clues. Here's the first. Okay, next. Yeah. Next. Uh, that's, is that the London the Olympics? Could be. Is it no? Supposed to do the next nest. Eagles nest. Birds nest. Is it the birds nest in Beijing? We need a nest. Next. 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 Wales. Oh, well, Wales is. Um, isn't that something to do with the eagle? I think they're, I think they're all used as a measure of distance. So you often say some things compared to the size of Wales. Oh yes. Okay, should we go for it? Possibly. Yeah. yeah. They're all things that are used as a sort of comparative distance or size. That is right. Coming in after three clues, you get two points. You didn't need to see a bus, a London bus, but they are colloquially used as units of measurement. Somebody will say it's so many Nelson's columns high. An Olympic swimming pool, that's all it is. The second one, so many Olympic swimming pools. And of course, something is always happening that's about the size of whales. Well done, very good. At the end of round one, the Francophiles have got three points. The Carterphiles are ahead with six. <laughs> Time for the sequences round, where the teams need to tell me what comes fourth in a sequence. Otherwise, the principle is just the same. There's a connection that they have to work out. Francophiles, you'll be going first again. Which hieroglyph would you like? Two reeds. Two reeds, OK. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Uh, next. Oh, city, cities in Wales. So what's the name? What's the, the city? What's, what's the last city that's become in Wales? In 2012. Are you sure? Was it not Newport? Yeah, no, no, Newport's not one. 2012 St Asaph. Brilliant. Coming in after two clues, you get three points. You're absolutely right. These are cities in a country about the size of Wales, <laughs> namely Wales. There are six cities in Wales, and the most recent is St Asaph created as part of the Queen's Jubilee. Very well done. Over to you then, Carter Files, to pick a question. Twisted flax, please. OK. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. Could be anything. Next. Next. Mr. Krabs, he's that crazy. He's in SpongeBob's Squarepants. Right, so we've got to guess. I mean, is it people who've all been married to? It's a sequence. 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 Okay, should we just guess? Three seconds. Montgomery Burns. And why would that be? Because he's the first Simpsons character that came to my mind. I see. Not the right answer. So it's a possible bonus chance for the Francophiles. <sighs> so would Patty and Selma appear then? Mm -hmm. Legs too far. I can't let you chat. Even though I know if I gave you 14 months, you wouldn't get it. Yeah. I described a previous question as horrible, but this one laughs in its face. Bully? in Bullseye, the game show, was a cartoon bull. Patty and Selma from The Simpsons, cartoon twins. Mr. Oh. Krabs from SpongeBob SquarePants is a crab. They are cartoons of symbols of the zodiac, zodiac. going oh, forwards. Yeah. We wanted to hear a cartoon lion for Leo. Simba, we went for. Cartoons of the zodiac. Oh, it's so twisted. I'm kind of loving it. So no bonus points, Francophiles, but you may choose a question. I of Horus. I of Horus. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Third mate, flask. Oh, it's, it's a third mate. 
Captain Ahab. Coming in after one clue, you get five points. The answer is Captain Ahab. Why is that? They, they are the officers of the, um, I forgot the name of the ship, now, but Captain Ahab, the people the yes. in ascending order. In Moby Dick, that's right. They were the footprints of an enormous whale. That's amazingly well calculated. How did you know it from one clue? Well, I only know one third made in fiction called Flask, so it seemed worth a, <laughs> worth a bet. But you didn't remember the name of the boat. <laughs> And yet you knew the third mate. Brilliant. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic to get five points at the semi-final stage. Well done. OK, Carter Files, the gloves are off, enabling them to reach the buzzer all the quicker. What would you like? The horned viper, please. The horned viper. These are going to be picture clues. What Ooh. would you expect to see in the fourth picture? Here's the first. Looks bars of gold. Is it 95 seconds? Should we go next? Carrots. Next. Mini Cooper. Carrot. So carrot, Cooper, carrot, mini, gold. Gold, Cooper, is it? Should we go next? Yeah. Next. That's a mini out of cloth. No. Gold, Cooper, cloth. Is there something to do with gifts or... Three seconds. Field of cloth of gold, though. Crown. Why would it be crown? I don't really know. I'm afraid it is not crown, so there's another bonus opportunity for the Francophiles. Well, it's Mad Men, Sterling Cooper, Draper, and I can't remember who the English guy is who they took on. Clark? I'm almost in tears. <laughs> you see, you've got the connection, right? Yeah. But you haven't got the answer. The agency in Mad Men is Sterling Cooper Draper Price. Price. Oh, we had a picture a of guy. Jonathan Price. Yeah. How annoying. If it was round one, you'd have got it. But round two, no. Very close, though. And your chance to choose a question. Uh, lion, please. Lion. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Here, the French do What is it? Is it something? Something that's inscribed. Oh, it could be things that inscribed, like the four corners of the Arc de Triomphe or something. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. N next. And that's who we are with Harold Phillips. Oh, no, it's the Pedro Tapestry. Yeah, yeah, it's the Pedro Tapestry. It's, it's, um, it's, it's Harold the King is killed. Harold the King is killed. Yeah. Harold the King is killed. Hick Harold Rex Interfectus Est. Here, Harold the King is killed. Very well done. What's the connection? Bayo Tapestry, the, uh, the things that are the written motifs the across the top. That's right. It's translations of the Latin inscriptions on the Bayo Tapestry. What's the picture with Hick Harold Rex Interfectus Est? Is that where the, um, he's got the arrow in his eye? Uh, yes, but then there's another chap being hit with a sword off a horse. Yeah, so nobody really, really knows yeah. if Harold was hit in the eye. Some say the arrow was added later anyway, and some say he was just hit by a sword, but certainly Harold the King's death is what the caption says. Very well done. Back to you, Carter Files, for the water question. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Any other? Does it mean anything to you? No. Next. It's a eardrum. The oracle is the last bit. What is it? The, they're working out what's in the ear. This is called the Oracle. It's got other names. Uh, Should we go for that? Yeah. What, the Oracle? Are you sure? Do you want to go next? Uh, yeah. What name? You reckon? Go for a second. The Oracle. I'm afraid that's not the answer, so I'm going to show the next in the sequence to the Francophiles for a possible bonus point. Of course. Should we go stirrup? Stirrup. 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 Not it, I'm afraid. You could get to stirrup, you'd need a different sequence. I think you know that this is the ear. It's sound travelling through the ear, going inwards and after the ossicles, the cochlea. You could split up the ossicles by name and call it something else, but after the ossicles, the cochlea would be the next thing. Nearly an anagram of oracle. But even if it were an anagram, I still couldn't give you the point. At the end of round two, the Carterphiles have got six points, but the Francophiles are ahead with 13. I know what you're thinking. It's all a bit too easy. Why don't they multiply the clues by four? It's all right, we have. It's the connecting wall. 
Carter Files, your turn to go first, and you've got the choice, lion or water. Lion, please. OK, you have got two and a half minutes to unjumble this wall, starting now. All right. Got some fish. Got battles. Hold on, let's go fish first. Dab, shark, flounder, brill. Salt as well. Dab, shark, flounder, salt. Mm -hmm. We got another fish that I'm not seeing. I don't know. We, we must do, have. We can do battles. battles, Flod, Cressy, and Hastings. What about this? Clontarf? Clontarf, I think. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Let's do the fish again. Oh, leave shark out. Flounder, dab. Oh. Real. I've so tried all these ones. What's, what's, what's Maven? What's McGrim? It's a famous Billy, Billy Wiz. Billy Wiz. A comic. Um, it's got to be a fish, isn't Hold it? Hold on. A maestro, a Maven, a Wiz, and someone who's Brill? No. Mm. What's the McGrim? A Dab, a Dab Hound. Dab. No. McGrim? Is that? I don't know what that rugby is. Rugby players. Um. Who's the fourth one then? Scotland. Okay. Three strikes and right. you're out now. So, slow down. What nationality are the rugby players? Slow down. They're gone. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. Scottish. Okay. So we've got fish, a brill, dab, shark, flounder, and we don't know what else. A maestro, maven, the people who are good at things. I don't I, mean, I guess a megrim is as well. I think, could a f could these, f can we try these four as people who are? Yeah, good. Yeah, we could. Oh, Shark is also someone who's good at it. Could it be Shark, Maestro? Try Wiz. Shark, Maestro and Wiz. Wiz. Shark, Maven, Maestro and Wiz. Yeah. That's it. It's off the wall. Very well done. Four points immediately for the groups. Okay. And let's go through looking for connections. Clontarf, Bosworth, Crazy, Flodden. They're all battles. I'm going to need more than that. There They're battles, battles in which kings, kings were, killed. were killed. They are all battles in which a monarch was killed. Quite right. Patterson, Irvine or Irvine, Hastings, Soul. Scottish Scot International Rugby Union players. Scottish Rugby Union Internationals, exactly. Now this one, Wiz, Shark, Maestro, Maven. They're all people who are good at something. They're experts. Experts, exactly right. And the last group, Dab, Flounder, Brill, Mugrim. They're all fish, and we think specifically they're all flatfish. They're all flatfish. You didn't know the Mugrim. No, not at all. Another name for a smooth soul. Yeah. I wish I had a smooth soul. I'm sure I was born with one. So, four points for the groups that you found, four more points for the connections, plus you get the bonus two for getting it all right. That is a brilliant ten points. Let's bring in the Francophiles now and give them a connecting wall. Sixteen new clues still need sorting out in the same meticulous way. Francophiles, you're going to get the water wall because Lion's already gone. You have got two and a half minutes to solve it. Starting now. Luca Kamani is a racehorse trainer. Michael Stout is a racehorse trainer. Paul Nichols is a racehorse trainer. And Pipe. Martin Pipe or David Pipe, no, so yeah. any, any more? No. Hills, Hills. Hills, Barry Hills. So it's, I'll just do these. Yeah. Okay. Mason is a Mason and Limoges type of Dartford, isn't that? Of Horsel. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So Mason, Limoges, and Willow and Coldwood. Hammond, Dartford, organs. Dartford. It's kind of organs as well I've got. Um, Shall I try organs? Let's try the organs. Does it work? Okay, okay. yeah. Pipe. Mouth, organ, pipe, Hammond, reed. No. Mouth, Hammond, cord, reed. No. What's Setties? Right, you've got, you got warblers in here. Setties, warbler, Dartford, Dartford. warbler, reed, warbler. warbler. And um, Willow Warbler. Oh, okay. okay. Three strikes and you're out so now. So it's mouth organ, Plenty pipe organ, Hammond organ, and what are your other things here? So, Limoges, what's a Dokia? Dokia, is that? Could be an organ. Uh, could be an organ. So, have I tried it with cord? I can't remember. Well, I've try, is, is cord a Should I try it? I might like, try it. Yeah. That's it, you've solved the wall. Four points immediately for the groups. Let's look for the connecting points. Stout or Stooped, Kumani, Nichols, Hills. Um, they're all racehorse trainers. I'm suddenly remembering. Aren't you the fellow who had to translate 3,000 <laughs> horse racing terms into French? The one and only. I see. So quite the expert on trainers. Very well found. Now what about this? Reed, Chetties or Setties, I suppose. Dartford, Willow. They're all birds. They're all kinds of warbler. They are warblers, exactly so. Cord, Hammond, Pipe, 
mouth. Organs. They're all organs. And the last one, Limoges, Meissen, Docha or Docha, Coalport. It's like it's porcelain. 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 Yes, do you want to tell me a little bit more? Are they all mm. porcelain factories? They're porcelain factories, Fact European okay. porcelain factories. Well done. Four points for finding the groups, four more for the connections. Of course, you get the bonus two points for getting it all right. That is the maximum ten. Very impressive. Let's see what it does to the scores going into the final round. The Cantophiles have got 16 points. The Francophiles have got 23. And you can play Connecting Walls on our website, where you can also write your own. But we are going to decide who goes through to the final and who goes home by missing vowels. Fingers on buzzers, teams. The first disguised group are all film crew professions. Codfiles. Horse wrangler. Correct. Don't know this one. It's boom operator. Next clue. This either. It's unit publicist. Next clue. Francophiles. Body double. That's the one. Next category. Political factions. Cartophiles. Militant tendency. Correct. Cartophiles. Eurosceptics. Correct. These people are outright libertarians. Next clue. Francophiles. The Tea Party. Correct. Next category, Scottish inventors and their inventions. Francophiles. John Logie Baird and television. Correct. Cartophiles. James Dewar and... Thermos flask. I'm afraid that's not it. You lose a point, Frank Files, you know it. James Dewar and vacuum flask. That is correct. Next clue. Frank Files. John Napier and logarithms. Correct. Frank Files. Robert Watson, Watt and Radar. Correct. Next category, opposites in German. Cartophiles. Ja and nine. Correct. That one was, of course, as people will be shouting at home, Heiss und Kalt. But the bell means it's the end of the quiz. And going home after a brilliant performance with 19 points, it's the Cartophiles. But going through to the final with an impressive 29, it's the Francophiles. Very well done. Cartophiles, you've been a great team. Thank you very much for playing. Excellent. Francophiles, we will be seeing you again in an even more difficult episode. Join me next time when we'll have two teams so bright we won't be bothering with studio lights. And lateral thinking, you'll need a widescreen TV to appreciate. Goodbye.